How many are excited to be in church on this Wednesday night? We're so glad to have you tonight. A big shout out to everybody that's online right now. Can we give them a big wave and watching online, tuning in from all over the world? Can the camera get some of those waves? Wave at the camera. If you see a camera next to you, wave at that camera. Say hi, say hi. We love you guys. One more time, let's give Jesus some praise in this place. He's worthy of it. He's so worthy. Yes. Tonight, tonight we're going to learn from the Bible on a simple message. It's called, Don't Give Up. Someone say, don't give up. How many need that? Just that word alone. I just need that right there. You know, you came today and not sure how you got here, but I do know this, that there is a word for you. God has this word for you and he loves you. I know this for a fact. If he did not love you, why would he send his son Jesus? He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you because he loves you so much and he has a plan for your life. And this is a message I believe he wants all of us to have tonight. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. You've made it this far. Why stop now? God has not given up on you. He will never give up on you. Do not give up on him. Are you ready to hear from the word tonight? <laughs> Bow your heads with me. Let's pray. God, we are grateful. You don't give up on us. Times we feel like throwing in the towel. Lord, it could be every morning. It could be at the end of every work shift, God. It could be at the end of every week. Lord, there's so many moments in our lives where we thought of quitting. Maybe we shouldn't be here right now, but we're so grateful that you are faithful. And your faithfulness does not depend on how good we are. It's unconditional love. You're faithful to us even when we're not faithful to you, God. So Lord, teach us tonight how to be your faithful sons and daughters, how to be your faithful servants, how to not give up because you did not give up on us. In Jesus' name we pray. And we say, amen. amen. Go ahead and take your seat. Give your neighbor a high five as you take your seat today. We're going to be continuing out of the book of 2 Corinthians. Right now we are studying 2 Corinthians as part of our daily growth book study. And we are learning from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 13 through 18. I'm going to read through these first and then we're going to go through it verse by verse. Is that okay? We're just going to let the Bible teach tonight, all right? So I'm going to get out the way and let the Holy Spirit do his thing. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verses 13 through 18, it says, but we continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I believe in God, so I spoke. I love that statement. I believe in God, so I spoke. We know that God who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present us to himself together with you. All of this is for your benefit. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. That is why we never give up. Someone say never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we do not look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we, the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. Let's give God praise for his word. He's a good God. Thank you for your word, Lord. So to give some context of what's taking place here, Paul has been writing this letter. This is his second letter to the Corinthians. And some of what he's writing about when he talks about um, the things that they've gone through and all of this is for your benefit and just encouraging them not to give up. He's speaking to uh, this, he's, the, the, the consistent theme we keep seeing is 
Although we go through persecution and hardship and pain and troubles and calamity, regardless of all the things we go through, there's one thing we should never do, give up. Never throw in the towel because you're facing a, tri a, a trial or a problem. Don't think that because you face a problem that God has abandoned you. Your problems are not evidence of God's abandonment. As a matter of fact, I'd say this, your problems are just a sign that it's time to grow. The reason why you face the problems you face today is because it's promotion time. You are no longer supposed to stay comfortable and God is just doing what he can to push you out of the nest and show you it's time to go to the next level. So whenever you see a worry or a trial or a problem, just know this is exciting. This is promotion time. This is time for me to grow. I am going to the next level. But Paul had to write this letter because he and Paul, of all people, had the authority to write a letter like this. Paul, for, for many of you guys that don't know, he was the, the he used to persecute Christians. He, he was one of the most notorious Christian killers of that time. And he thought he was doing a service to God. And then Jesus met him, he got radically saved. And then he became one of the most persecuted people on, uh, uh, on uh, apostles that were preaching the gospel. He was, uh, actually took lashes on his back. He was shipwrecked, he was in prison, he was beaten, left to die. And this was multiple times, this wasn't like one occasion. Paul was literally, uh, he was a gangster for Jesus. I mean, he was on another level. So he had this authority. He was able to talk to people that were going through persecution. And he wasn't somebody that just lived a cozy life. He actually had some weight in the words that he spoke. And, and it's important that we, we, we understand what he's saying here. We're learning from somebody that's been through a trial or two. We are not just learning from somebody that has been uh, uh, protected and, and in a gated community their whole life and grew up with a, in a beautiful little home and no we're learning from someone that's been through some stuff and he's telling us basically this is his this is his heart uh, of, of what God has inspired this scripture with this is his heart and this is the message we're getting tonight I've been through a lot but I realize this my troubles are small compared to the glory that's coming and if God can get me through this he can get you through it too do not give up look at somebody next to you and just tell them don't give up So in the face of challenges, do not lose your faith. The only way to endure life's hardest challenges is to fix your perspective. Change the way you see things. Look at it from a different lens. You know the old saying, the cup is, the cup is either half empty or half full. You ever heard that saying? Many of us got a half empty mentality our whole life and all we can see is how empty the cup is. Now I'm not saying we gotta just be this super giddy, optimistic, cheery person all day and just, ah, oh, the sun is shining even though it's thunderstorms outside and you know, you know, I'm not saying be that kind of person, but I am saying is that as long as your mentality is fixed on your problems, you will never overcome them. And I'll say this, when you focus on the problems, you lose hope. But when you focus on the hope, you overcome your problems. And who is our hope? He has a name, his name is Jesus, and he's died on the cross so that you can defeat all of the trials that you face. Do not live life with a victim mentality. We say things like, it's not fair. They don't have to, they haven't gone through what I've gone through. They don't know my story. Maybe you've said those words and you felt that before, but but I have, I have good news for you. If you feel like you're all alone and no one else shares your story, there's one person who can sympathize and empathize with you as compassion because he's been through the worst trials, the worst trauma. His name is Jesus. And he's overcome every temptation and every problem for you. So you're not alone. But let's take this portion of scripture verse by verse. And I believe by the end of tonight, my prayer is this, that you are encouraged, that you uh, are, are, I would say, comforted even. If you're going through a difficult time right now, my prayer is that you leave tonight with the courage and the faith to get through the worst storm and the worst trials. Amen? How many of you just are just ready for that tonight? You're just ready to receive that. 
2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. I'm sorry, 13. We'll start from 13. It says, but we continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I believed in God, so I spoke. I believed, so I what? Let me just stop there. I, I love that statement. And it's so true. Because I, I, I do believe this. When you believe in something enough, you talk about it. You talk about it a lot. You believe in, you believe in some, uh, um, I don't know, there's something you believe in, something you bought on some infomercial, and you just believe in it. You start, you start taking, I, I, how many have heard the story? I told the story one time. Um, I've only told it one time because I realized it was a scam because I got played. I kept, get, I kept getting these ads on Instagram on how to get a six pack. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You get those ads too. You know what I'm talking about. It seems like I don't know how Instagram knows I don't have a six pack. How? I don't know how anyone knows I don't have a six pack. No, I'm just kidding. Is it that obvious? I'm just playing. So I had these ads and I seen, you know, you could take this pill. <laughs> Sounds silly. It was, it was a little more intricate than that. I mean, this guy sold me like a fool. But then, but here, it gets crazier. So they do this ad, right? And then they're like, yeah, this, you know, this chemical that they discovered in the Amazon forest is, you know, has a secret components that will unlock the cells in your stomach and start to shred weight. I'm like, how come people don't know about this? I cannot wait to get it, because I know I'm gonna tell everybody about it. First, I gotta get a six pack, and then I'm gonna tell people about it, right? So, so I, you know, I, I go to the next step, and then they're like, you know, if you get that, that's great, but the real results come when you add this supplement to it. This other chemical that was discovered on the top of Mount Everest, when they unlock and they melted the ice, it had a chemical, and that combined with this will unlock the six pack. So at first I thought, wait, I thought the Amazon thing was gonna lock it. But now they're saying, no, if you get this and this, it's a whole nother level. Eight pack, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, cool, let's go to the next, let's, let's get this too then. Lo and behold, you would not believe it. There was a third supplement you needed. So he goes, now you can get this and this. But people that stop there, they don't really see results. You gotta get this other thing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I got played. I realized then and there, I got played. Sure enough, you think that stuff works? That's cold blooded. Everybody said no. You all said no. That's cold. Well, you're right, it did not work. Which is why I don't talk about it. I, I know it's a lie. As a matter of fact, I started talking about how I got scammed. Never do it. I blocked their account on Instagram so I'll never see their ads again. Oh man, praise the Lord. Why did I tell that story? Well, this is my point. When you believe in something, you'll preach about it all day long. You'll talk about it. You'll let people know. Now, my message for you guys on that whole thing, don't do it. Just go to the gym like everyone else who has a six pack. They go to the gym. That's the secret, I guess, right? Okay, I'm talking to him because he's a personal trainer over here and he has a six pack, so that's why I asked him. But here's the thing. When you believe, when you believe something within your heart, you talk about it. The Bible says this, the abundance of the heart, the mouth, the abundance of the heart, the mouth, so if you believe it about it enough, you'll talk about it. You want to know where somebody is? Listen to what they talk about. You want to know where somebody is actually at or how they actually feel? Listen to their words. Listen to what they talk about and what they say. If they're constantly talking about the person that has hurt them, then chances are they're still dealing with the pain in their heart. If you're constantly talking about or complaining about the person that's getting under your skin, you're probably dealing with some type of offense. Or on the other hand, uh, maybe there's somebody in here, you got saved, you got radically transformed, and God totally changed your life, and you could not stop talking about Jesus. You couldn't stop. 
And some of your friends are like, man, why you just keep talking all this God stuff? And because you believe in it. I just believe in it so much. Let me tell you about this message I heard. Man, it was awesome. Let me tell you, oh, man, this worship, man, when I was in worship, God touched me. Man, let me tell you about Holy Warriors. I was taking the class and now I'm changing. And you're talking about it. And you're talking about it. And you're, why? Because you believe in it. That's why the psalmist said, that's why the scripture and the psalmist said this, I believe in God, so I spoke. Now I'll say this. When somebody experiences true transformation in God, they begin to talk differently, and their faith gives them a testimony. Your faith in God gives you a testimony. Not your background, not what you went through, not all the stuff that, uh, uh, all the, the tragedy you've gone through, no. What really gives you a testimony is when you believe in what God says. You were once there, but now you're here. You were once at the, at the bottom of, 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 of in the trenches, and now God picked you up and gave you life. You were once addicted, and now you're free. You were once depressed, and now you have hope. You were once suicidal, and now you speak life into people. What you're doing is you're speaking about what you've put your faith in or who you've put your faith in. So people that talk about God, it's because they believe in him. Now, this gets me thinking, and this may get you thinking. Well, when was the last time I talked about God? Now, I'm not saying you don't believe in God because you haven't talked to your coworkers about him, but I will say this, that your faith should grow. And as your faith in God grows, as your belief in his word grows, then so should your words about him. Talk about it. Talk about him. Talk about what he's done for you. Talk about how he has set you free. Let somebody know because your faith will produce a testimony in you. Amen? So the result of believing is speaking. So now, Paul is saying we're going to continue to preach. He's basically saying I'm compelled to talk about it because I believe in God. And he faced a lot of persecution for what he talked about. You might face persecution from the people you love your friends, the people that said they were close to you at the club, now you're a Christian and they're nowhere to be seen. You might face persecution in different ways, but that should not stop you from talking about it. What keeps you talking about God is your faith in him. Then it says in verse 14, we know that God who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present us to himself together with you. This is so cool because in other words, it doesn't really matter if you die for preaching the good news because you know that the, at the end of the day, resurrection is for you. This is crazy. There's another level of confidence for the person who knows that the end is not actually the end. And when you know that there is life ahead of you, you know that the resurrection is coming. And you know that eternity in heaven with the Lord forever is in your future. You have a different type of confidence in the way you talk. I don't care if you threaten me to leave me, threaten to hurt me, or threaten to kill me. Because even if you kill me, I'm going to live. I don't care what you do to me or what you say about me or what you do uh, to, to me personally. When I die, it's not over. And that's what we have to understand as believers, church. We got to know when we die, it isn't over. When, when, we, when we leave these bodies, this is a temporary body anyways. Thank God, because in my future one, we'll have a six pack. But this one's a temporary one. We're going to leave this old body here. And we're going to be resurrected with new ones. Our future is greater than our past. And you can have so much confidence in your walk with God when you know the best is yet to come for you. Do not be afraid to let people know about God or to tell him your testimony. Don't stop preaching because when we die, it's not over. So verse 15, he goes on to say, all of this is for your benefit. All of this, all the stuff we go through, all the persecution, all the stuff I've gone through, all of these things, this is all for your benefit. What a statement. That while Paul was actually going through some of the stuff he was going through, he probably was thinking about the, the, the churches that he was going to be 
starting and, and the missionary journeys he was on. But it also reminds me of somebody who suffered a very horrible death and had you on their mind, Jesus. He had you on his mind while he was on the cross, while he was being persecuted and took nails in his hands and in his feet. I believe that he had you on his mind and that's what kept him on the cross was to be faithful and obedient to the, the, this mission of rescuing us but also because he loved you and he loves you today. All of this for your benefit. It says all of this is for your benefit. All of what Jesus went through was for your benefit. All the lashes he took on his back was for your benefit. All of the pain, all of the betrayal, the persecution, the nails, the lashes, the, the, even all the sin he took upon himself, he became sin for you. All of it was for your benefit. Thank you, Jesus, that you did that for me. Thank you, Jesus, that you took on the worst punishment for my benefit. I did not deserve it, but you did that for me. That's the grace of God. Now, Paul's saying the same thing here to the Corinthian church. He said, all of this, all this stuff I've gone through, all the stuff we've been going through, all this persecution is for your benefit. And he's saying, and as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. You know, some things you go through, they're meant to help someone else out. Now, we know that you wouldn't have gone through it if it was too much for you to handle. The reason why you went through it is because the Lord knew you could handle it. But when you overcome the trial, it brings hope to the person who's in it right now or the person that will go through it eventually. It says in 2 Corinthians 1.4, this is just three chapters before this, it says, he comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. How beautiful is that? Think about the things you've gone through. The Lord knew, knew you could handle it. Lord knew he would get you through it, that he would help you to overcome. God knew that through his power and through his mighty works, through his mercy, through his grace, and through his hand, that he could take you step by step, and he could help you overcome. But he also knew that by helping you, he was helping other people too, because he comforted you. That word comfort is a, this word in, in Greek, it's para, parakalon, which means to call to one side. God was saying, in those moments of your, your darkest days, I called you right here to my side and I took care of you. I called you to my side to speak into you, to encourage you, to comfort you, to strengthen you and to counsel you. In the middle, middle of your hardest moments, God becomes your comforter. God is the one who takes care of your deepest needs and he does this so that you can also become someone else's comforter. Amen? I remember, well, when I was nine years old, my dad passed away. And I think I have a picture. This is me and, and my dad. I think this was Disneyland or something, I can't remember. <laughs> so that's me and my dad. But I was nine when he passed away. And I love my dad, we had a great relationship. But he got cancer and he died at home on hospice. And the whole family was there for his final moments. And we remember we, we were there for his last breath and it was a very difficult moment in my life. But fast forward, I remember one of my first times preaching here at the church. I was a late teen, probably 18 or 19, I can't remember exactly how old, but I remember I preached a message and suddenly in the middle of the message, I felt compelled to talk about my dad. And it had nothing to do with my message at all. It came from left field and it was, it almost felt like it was a forced story in something that didn't have to do with it. Not that it wasn't important, it just, it just didn't really fit. And I remember afterwards, Pastor Marco asked me, he said, why did, why did you bring that up? Because it seemed like it didn't fit there. 
It didn't fit with the message. And I didn't know either. I just felt compelled to talk about my dad in the middle of the message. But come to find out, there was a man in the congregation who just lost his dad. He was broken. There was only one thing he heard in that entire message. And he related to it. It was the pain that I went through when I lost my dad. He ended up coming to the altar that night and he gave his life to Jesus. He, he got saved that night. And it was my pain and just me sharing those words that comforted him to the point that he could be comforted now by God and he surrendered his life to the Lord. Now I'm not saying that that had to happen for me to, my dad had to pass away in order for me to comfort him. I'm not saying it had to happen that way. But I am saying that because I believe in God, because my faith is in him, God can use my painful story as comfort for somebody else. God, can, God will, here's the beautiful thing about the Lord, you, your, your problems and your trials, they never go to waste. What you went through is never in vain. You don't go through trials just for no reason. Eventually, they're gonna make you stronger, yes, but also, they're gonna be comfort for somebody next to you that needs you to call them by your side. You're gonna be that comforter, that protector, that person that helps somebody else out. How many wanna be a comforter for people around you? Amen. It says in Ephesians chapter three, verse 20, now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him. You know, sometimes I see this scripture and I think, when I think of God doing infinitely more than I can ask or think, I think it initially, it's, we only think of the positive things. Like, yes, God can do bigger and better. And I, th I know that's true. But I know that there's, there's another side to that truth. And it's that God can accomplish more. With his power, he can accomplish more even when you go through hard times. It's more than you could ask or think. It's more than you would want to do. But through his power, he can accomplish great things in your problems. And this is why God says he makes beauty out of ashes. And you may feel like your story or your testimony or your life consists of ashes right now. But God can do infinitely more than we can ask or think. Maybe you didn't want the ashes and God is saying, don't worry because my power works greatest in your weakness. And when you feel weak, when you feel like you can't keep going, and when you feel like you got a pile of ashes, all I see is potential for beauty. All I see is a canvas for me to do some great work. All I see is me being able to use you to do mighty things and to give you a testimony and a story to be a comforter and to be able to preach this good news to people all over the world. I am going to use you to do great and mighty things in Jesus' name. There's another man. His name is, you may have heard of him, Nick Vujicic. This is him right here. He has no arms or legs. As a child, he faced many difficulties. He was bullied. He felt lonely because of his physical condition. He was just born without limbs. And at the age of 10, he contemplated suicide, believing that his life had no meaning. But there was a turning point in his life when he came and he read a story in the Bible about a man that was born blind. And he said that that man's condition existed so that the works of God might be displayed in him. John 9, 3. And this gave Nick a new perspective. He began to believe that there was a purpose behind his challenges and that he could inspire others by going through what he's going through. Since then, fast forward, he's traveled to over 60 countries. He's spoken to millions of people all over the world, written several books, and preaches the gospel of Jesus wherever he goes. And I don't know what his life would have looked like if he had limbs, but I do know that there are more people that have come to faith in Jesus Christ that were encouraged and inspired because he was willing to not give up when, when everyone else wanted to take him out. He stayed in the fight and he did not give up. He put his faith in Jesus and God used him to do mighty things and he could do the same for you. 
I don't know what your fight is right now. I don't know what you're going through, but do not give up because God can take your challenges and God can show his glory through you and he can give you a story to share. And I believe at the end of this road, there will be glory ahead for you and great things for you in Jesus' name as long as you don't give up. Verse 16 says, that is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. You may have scars right now on the outside. You may be dealing with still some of the repercussions of the trials or the problems that you've gone through. But the man or the, the woman on the inside is being renewed every day. Your spirit is being renewed every single day. Your character, your strength, your faith in God, your endurance, your tenacity, your ability to go through things and, and get through them, your resilience. See, who you are is being strengthened more and more and more. And the more you trust in God, the more you put your faith in God, then I believe the more he can help you grow from the inside out. So don't let your scars tell you that God abandoned you. No, always remember this, that your problems are just a sign that the best is coming and you're going to the next level. <laughs> Romans 5, 3. Romans 5, 3 through 5 says, we can rejoice when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. It says this, and this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. The problems you face, they're actually opportunities. They're opportunities for growth. And you're, you will not be disappointed based on, on how things are going and what, what direction they're going. And it may seem like, I hope God comes through. Well, I got good news for you. This scripture is telling us you will never be disappointed when you give your life to the Lord. I've never met anybody that has regretted giving their life to God. Man, I regret being free. I regret, man, I used to be angry and now I just have peace. I regret it. I'm just kidding. I've never met anybody disappointed being free. I've never met anybody being disappointed and having a, a clear mind, being disappointed in having healthy relationships, being disappointed in their sins, being forgiven and wiped away for all of eternity. I have never met anybody that regretted or was disappointed when they stuck it out with the Lord. God always comes through on his promises. Come on, give God some praise because he's faithful. Verse 17 says, for our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. You know, I know that God doesn't let your problems go to waste, but I want you to know, and I want, I, I want to challenge you, don't let your problems go to waste. Don't let your trials just, just become trash. The trials you go through should produce something in you. And don't just go through a problem just for the sake of going through problems. Let it do something in you. See it through to the end. Don't give up. Problems always produce power. See, I want you to picture your problems like a seed. And when you have a seed, it's like, it's like a trial. When you plant that seed, it produces something great. But when you throw it away, it does nothing for you. But when we don't learn from our trial, when we give up, we can never get the return that God wanted to give you in the middle of your problem. Just think about, think about like if I had a seed right now and all the potential blessing, all the potential fruit, all the harvest I can get from this one seed, how powerful is that? How heavy the tree would weigh, how big and grand it would be, how much it would provide for you. And your problem is like the seed. And until, until you hand it over to the Lord, until you do something with it, it can never produce what God intended for it to produce in you. Don't throw it away. Don't just forget about it, but instead hand it over to the Lord. 
Give God your trial. Let him see you through and walk you through it. Put your faith in Jesus. Don't give up on him. And I promise you, that problem will produce something great in your life. And I know this, it says, verse 17, if we could put that up again, it says, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly, oh, so I'm sorry, it says, for the present troubles are small and they won't last very long. They won't last very long. I think God had to tell us this because some of us have been losing hope. And maybe you're feeling like in the middle of this fight that this, tr this trouble, this problem has been lasting a little bit too long. Maybe it's been months, maybe it's been years, maybe it's been your entire life, your whole life. And you're thinking, this is a long time. I thought the scripture said it, sh it shouldn't last long. But when we go through suffering, I know that it seems like it lasts longer than it should. Have you ever gone through a, a difficult time and just, and it seems like time just slowed down? I remember that when my dad passed away, it was like that for me. It seemed like to me that time just stopped. Nothing else mattered in that moment. And it hurt to go through those moments. And maybe you're going through a trial right now and it seems like it's taking longer than it should. But if we keep this all into perspective and realize that even the short years, even if it's our entire life, if it's 50, 60 years of that suffering, that even that compared to the glory of eternity, of God's faithfulness and his glory and his power and being free and being in heaven for all of eternity, it does not compare to the trials we go through today. Have hope, don't give up, because the best is yet to come in Jesus' name. Romans 8, 18 says, yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. In the last verse, verse 18, it says, so we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. This is why we don't look at the things we can see now. This is why we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. I know it's like we're saying, God, I know you will come through. I know, I know that although I may not see it now, God, I know there's hope. God, although, although the situation maybe hasn't changed in the physical, I know in the spiritual I have already won this fight and I could stand confidently even if I were to die in this, I'm going to resurrect and live again. This thing is not going to take me out. I don't care how hard it is. I don't care how long I've been in it. I don't care how much it hurts inside. God, I know you're greater than this Goliath. You're bigger than this mountain and I can speak directly to this thing and say, get behind me. You have no power over me. You're underneath my feet, Satan, and you can can it not take me out? I'm not giving up. See, the problem will soon be gone, and we got to remember that God always comes through. Last verse I'll give you is Hebrews 12, verse 1 through 3. It says, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Why, how do we do this? It says this. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and protects our faith. We, we do this because of the joy awaiting him. He endured the cross, disregarding its shame. What was the joy awaiting him? It was a relationship with you. The joy awaiting him was that you could be free. Was that, was that your sins could be forgiven for all of eternity. You know, without Jesus, we have to pay this horrible debt. We would have to pay for our own sin. And the only way we could pay for that sin is eternity in hell forever. But because of Jesus, he died on that cross for you and me. And the joy awaiting him was that we could spend eternity with him in heaven forever. And it could start right here on this earth. Your relationship with God can start tonight. It says, now he's seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. So to wrap this whole thing up, I'll leave you with this. Don't give up when you face trials. God's never gonna let your problems go to waste. 
and we never suffer in vain. Trust that God is doing something in you. He's developing you. You're being strengthened. You're going to the next level. And your story, I believe, is gonna comfort somebody else. Don't forget that there are more people in this world than just you. And when we trust God with our life, He can do something great with it. But it all begins, it all begins with responding and receiving Jesus into our life. Without Jesus, our problems will overwhelm you. They will overwhelm us. Your problems will overcome you. Without Jesus, your problems and many people have been taken out by them. Many people have died in their sin. They have died without hope. They have gone on without any answer, without any sign of hope. There's people that have died and gone on to hell forever. But I want you to know that tonight, this is why God wanted you here, to give you this message that I love you, I have a plan for you, but more than anything, I died on the cross. I did not give up while I was on the cross so that I can have a relationship with you. Before anybody else leaves, please, I would ask you this. If today were the last day you lived and in a moment you stood before God and you had to answer for your life, my question to you is this. Do you know if you'd spend eternity in heaven or would you spend eternity in hell? And if you don't know the answer, I have good news for you. God wants to give you the answer and he wants to give you eternal life today. It's a free gift. This is what the Bible says. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of God's standard and the price for that sin is death. That means we will pay a hard price. There's a consequence for that sin. But God loves us so much, what does he do? He sends his perfect son to die on the cross for you and me, to wash your sin away so that you can have a relationship with him. And he did this because he loves you so much. So now the Bible says anyone that confesses Jesus as the Lord will be saved. And if tonight you're ready to make that decision, you're ready to put your faith in Jesus, you're ready to repent, which means I'm ready to turn away from the way I've been living and to give my life to God. You can do that tonight. So at the count of three, I want everybody who's saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. I just want you to raise your hand so I could see you. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this room. I see you, bro. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I see you guys. I'm proud of you. I see you guys. I'm proud of you. Anybody else? Put your hand up. I want to be forgiven of my sin. I want to give my life to Jesus. I see you guys. I'm proud of you. Just put your hand up and you're saying, I want to know if I were to die today, I'd go to heaven. And I'm ready to surrender my life to Jesus today. I'm not giving up. I'm proud of you. Anybody else in the back, in the front, I'm proud of you. I see you back there. Let's all do this. Why don't we all stand to our feet? The altar team is coming up. This is a prayer team. And they're here just to pray with you. And if you raise your hand, there was probably a couple dozen people that raised their hand tonight. If you're saying, I'm ready to give my life to Jesus and I'm ready to surrender everything, then I want you to make your way out of your seat. Would you come to the front and meet us up here? Meet this team up here. They just want to meet you and pray with you tonight and congratulate you for the decision you're making. And church, this is where we get excited. This is where we clap. Come on, this is where we give God the praise for every soul that has given their life to Jesus tonight. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on up, if you're ready to give your life to Jesus. Check with the person next to you, say, if you're ready, I'll go up there with you. Come on up, if that's you. This is awesome.
I'm seeing young kids up here. I'm seeing every walk of life up here. I just thank God, as long as we're on this earth, it's not too late for you. If there's anybody else you're saying, I'm, I'm ready to give my life to Jesus. We're making a little extra time just for you. You're that important to the Lord. And you're saying, man, I know I need to be up there. I know I gotta give my life to God. I, I just needed that extra push, that extra nudge. Then, then this is for you. Tonight's your night. Don't play Russian roulette with your life. We do not know when we're gonna go. We do not know our time. Tonight could be the night, but we praise God that tonight is the night that you can give your life to Jesus 100%. Check with the person next to you and ask them, if you wanna go up there, I'll go up there with you. We'll go together, we'll go as a family. Tonight's the night. I don't know why I'm taking extra time, but this is for somebody tonight. Someone's given their life. Come on, she's coming up. We're proud of you. Let's give her a hand. This was for you. God's touching her right now. God's touching her right now. Thank you, Lord. Well, the people that came forward, this class, Holy Warriors, that's coming up, is designed to help you in your walk. Really just designed to teach you how to pray, how to walk with God. We're gonna show you how to get baptized. We're gonna get, this class is just gonna equip you with everything you need. So the person in front of you, they're gonna pray with you and sign you up for Holy Warriors class. Let's pray, bow your heads with me. Everybody repeat after me. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Thank, you. Thank you. I believe in you. I put my faith in you. I confess that I've sinned against you. But today, I repent and I surrender my life to you. I believe you died on the cross and you rose from the dead so that I can be saved. From this moment forward, my life belongs to you. I'll never be the same again. Fill me with your spirit. Strengthen me so that when I face problems or trials, I won't give up because your power works greatest in my weakness. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Before you go, I wanna pray for you. Just lift your hands. I'm gonna say a blessing over you that God strengthens you in the middle of your fight. God, right now, I pray over every person that's going through a, tr a problem, a trial, a dilemma, something difficult. And God, I pray that you would strengthen them as they go. Father, I pray that you would bless them, God, with the endurance, with the faith in you, God, that you will never give them something they cannot handle. I pray that in this church, you will make comforters, Lord, that when someone else is going through something, that we will be the first to bring somebody close and comfort them by sharing about what God has brought us out of. So we give you praise and thanks. Bless them, Lord, as they go. In Jesus' name we pray. We all say... God bless you, church. We love you so much. Have a wonderful night.